Some may speculate that this image is fake, and indeed it may be fake. However, it is also probably a magnesium meteor, and I am saying this simply because I have seen one very much like it that fell over the Rocky Mountains during an intense period of meteor activity when I was a kid. There are meteors, of course, that fall all the time across our planet, sometimes quite spectacularly, and they get caught on camera more and more given how often we have cameras going and shutters clicking all over the planet. Shutters clicking? Well, that may be a little outdated. However, what we do know is that a meteor fell in 2014 that was different than any meteor that had hit our planet before, at least as far as we know. This meteor came from not within our solar system, but from from outside, from the vastness of interstellar space. And even more excitedly, it may not have been a meteor at all, but something artificial. I made a video about this a few months ago, and I speculated that maybe one day we might go looking for it. Well, it turns out that Harvard University is one third of the way to the funding that they require to go looking for this meteor and retrieve it. If they do indeed retrieve this meteor, it will be a scientific discovery of epic proportions. And if they retrieve something other than a meteor, it will change the world forever. Hello YouTube, I'm the Angry Astronaut and this is... At 1700 hours plus 5 minutes and 34 seconds UTC on the 8th of January 2014, an interstellar meteor less than half a meter in diameter collided with our planet. We have a 99.999% confidence that this meteor did indeed come from an interstellar destination, according to a paper that was released by Avi Loeb and his colleagues. Colleague Amir Siraj. Now, this is still under some degree of dispute. However, the U.S. Space Force confirmed that this was indeed an interstellar trajectory. The speed was too high to be coming from inside our solar system, and also they know where the thing impacted. Dr. Joel Moser, the Chief Scientist of Space Operations Command, confirmed that the object was traveling about 60 kilometers per second, which is greater than escape velocity from the solar system and traveling at a hyperbolic trajectory, making it impossible to have originated from inside our own solar system, and it impacted off the coast of Papua New Guinea at 1.3 degrees south and 147.6 degrees east or roughly 300 kilometers north of Manus Island, about right there. But the interstellar origin of this meteor is not the only bizarre thing about it. We think it's roughly the size of a washing machine, and yet, given the explosion it created, over a hundred tons worth of TNT, or about 1% of the power of a Hiroshima bomb, we estimate its weight at about 460 metric tons. 460 tons for something half a meter in diameter. That is incredibly bizarre. Dr. Loeb describes the characteristics of this meteor thusly, quote, the interstellar meteor appears to be rare both in composition, tougher than all known meteorites, including those made of iron, and in speed. Yet, it was the first interstellar meteor detected through the light emitted by its fireball. The first interstellar object detected through through reflected sunlight, a muamua appeared anomalous relative to all known comets and asteroids. He goes on to say, studying these fragments in a laboratory would allow us to determine the isotope abundances and check whether they are different from those found in solar system meteors. Altogether, anomalous properties of interstellar objects like CNEOS 
01-08. Yeah, these are odd names. And Muamua hold the potential for revising conventional wisdom in our cosmic neighborhood. As usual, Dr. Loeb is at least suggesting the possibility that a meteor that is unlike any that we have ever detected in our solar system might be of artificial origin. And even if it isn't, it's worth tracking it down because of the extremely small expense of towing a magnet along the seabed at the suspected impact point for 10 days. It is hoped that this magnet will recover tiny fragments of the meteorite measuring as small as 0.1 millimeters across. Dr. Siraj hopes that given the extremely high material strength of this meteorite based on their calculations, it is likely that the fragments are going to be ferromagnetic and therefore could be easily picked up by the magnet. Once analyzed, it would be easy to determine the difference between fragments of an interstellar origin and the isotopes present in those fragments versus other magnetic objects found at the bottom of the sea. Really, this entire process would be very straightforward, once again, assuming that the object is metallic. If it isn't, then we have a real mystery on our hands, because no meteorite this heavy and this dense could be made out of anything except metal. It's highly unlikely that it could be a hyper-dense object like a piece of a white dwarf, because once removed from the white dwarf, the atoms would simply expand to their normal size and the object would explode. So really, we are most probably looking for a metallic object, although possibly consisting of a metal that we have never before detected. And even if it isn't, it has been subjected to the sunlight and gravitational influences of an entirely different solar system, experienced many millions, if not billions of years of travel between stars, and maybe just maybe it's a piece of technology that will change our civilization and how we look at the universe forever. Harvard's Galileo project has already raised half a million dollars of the $1.6 million required to fund the expedition. If you want to support this expedition, the Galileo project's website is linked in the description. If you want to support my content, please hit that notification bell and also like subscribe and check the description for various ways to support my content and as always stay angry about space